The Germans bombed this island of Guernsey at 6.55 p.m. on June the 28th, 1940. On July the 1st, 1940, German troops marched through the streets of St. Peterport. It was the beginning of the occupation. And to Douglas Ord, writing in his diary, it looked like the end of the world, of this little world at least. Douglas Ord had come to the island in 1937 as the Methodist minister of Ebenezer Church in Brock Road. You can just see its spire rising above the St. Peter Port skyline. Douglas had been a prisoner of war in 1918 and was no stranger at all to the German military. He knew what it could do, and he had no illusions. And he was fearful for the safety of his flock. Up in his study at the manse, Douglas writes his diary of the occupation in all its often painful detail. The deportations of his island friends like Robert and Trixie Chilcott to Biberac. Louis Symes, who killed himself in Shershmidi prison. The collaborator, Peter Doyle. And the Jews, Marianne Grunfeld, Therese Steiner, both transported to Auschwitz. What could Douglas Ord do for the best? How could he protect his flock, keep them safe, when all the time a dog that may turn savage is roaming loose amongst us? Everywhere he looked, he could see what the Germans, the green fly, as he called them, were doing to the islanders. Cruelty, casual violence, deprivation, everywhere. But Douglas Ord let those Germans who wished to enter his Brock Road church to worship. Like his German friends, Martin Niemöller and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Douglas believed that within his church was the peace of Christ. All conflicts and hatred could be left outside, and all could meet as equals before their God. Vater unser, der du bist im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe wie im Himmel, also auch auf Erden, unser täglich Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld. And indeed, one of his greatest friends during these years was a German officer, Reinhold Zachmann from Dresden. They spoke together with an absolute frankness about the war and Germany, and Reinhold brought Douglas and his wife, G, food, even his own rations, when the great hunger of the autumn of 1944 came to the island. And it was a hunger that was shared by everyone in the island, including the Germans, who were forced to scrabble in the granite walls for snails, dig in the earth for acorns to eat, and shoot seagulls out of the sky to make their soup. Douglas Ord's diary is the most impressive, significant, and moving account of the occupation years. And the writing has such immediacy and vivacity that we feel we are actually there with the islanders, share their problems, face the moral dilemmas, and feel the pain. The Ord Diary is a remarkable work, and Douglas Ord, a remarkable man.